Hello everybody and welcome back to my career playthrough in Kerbal Space Program. And today we are going to see something, well, extraordinary. Because what you see here is my first attempt at building my Jewel 5 mission. If you remember, the entire goal of this uh, the entire goal of this series is to actually be able to get to Jewel and perform a Jewel Five mission. So what I did here is I kind of built a little bit of an um, SSTO type thing, even though I don't have any rapier engines. But since Lathe's atmosphere is a bit different than Kerbin's and gravity as well, I think the Panther engines and the Terriers will be enough. I also put something here inside, which is the science bay and where the scientist is going to be. And then, yeah, I only put the landing gear on the outside of these engine nacelle things, which are going to be dropped as soon as we switch over to that uh, those liquid fuel engines, because... Well, I don't think we're going to be reusing this jet, unfortunately. However, what we are going to reuse is this here. This here is a smallish little lander with some big tanks on the side, which is going to maybe let's disconnect this for a bit. Okay, it's see through and red, but you can probably see what this thing is doing. So basically, what you're seeing here is a core lander that is going to be uh, landing on everything except Tylo because and Lathe, of course because Tylo is needing some extra oomph, which will be provided by these external tanks. Uh, yeah, and I really hope that this is going to work. I haven't tested it out yet. The thing is, though, uh, we're already in very expensive territory. So this is 266,631 funds. And I only have 350 and I have not yet even built a launch vehicle. So yeah, I also think I need to get these uh, vehicles up there in pieces. So I think I need to send up the entire big transfer interplanetary ship here. And then I need to send up this little lander, or maybe I can do both at once, I'm not sure. Thing is that this here on top is going to wreak havoc on my aerodynamics. And therefore I'm going to try to avoid that. So yeah, we're not going, uh, we're not going to go to Jewel yet. Also, because if we look at our transfer window, we still have a year left until we can go there. Uh, what is coming up though is a Duna window in 203 days. And of course, uh, one of our missions is coming up in a short while. But before we can get to that, I want to get some more cash. Because, yeah, since I... Since I, I upgraded basically all of my buildings, which you have probably seen in the previous episode, I am now a bit short on cash. So, yeah. How about that Duna thing? It has a nice advance. What is that orbit? Generate power, thermometer, mystery goo, stability, designed orbit. Is it a geostationary orbit like the other one? No. So maybe let's take this one and shoot it up really soon. Uh, yeah, let's take this rescue contract. Tom Ford is on the moon. Well, he should not be there. And yeah, I don't really want to do a tourist contract. So we still have 12 active contracts and we have a few on the moon. We need to rescue Sidus Kerman. Kerbin? Kerman? From Kerbin? No, from the moon. Uh, we need to rescue Melby from Kerbin, uh, which should be fairly easy. Uh, planting a flag on the moon and exploring the moon. Yeah, this is a doozy. We're going to do that easily because what we're going to do is we're going to read some temperatures. Uh, let me show you that in the tracking station because that's way better to look at things. 
All right, where is the moon? There is the moon. And we need to go here. We need to go here. And we need to go here. So I'm guessing that I'm getting a few new biome things. Oh, and Tom Ford as well. Where is Tom Ford? Down here. So yeah, these are a lot of things on the moon that we need to do. So let's build something that can do the job. All right. Yeah, this is still the, the jewel vehicle. We don't want that. What we do want is this big thing here. And what we also want is, yeah, the possibility to refuel. I do not yet have uh, scanned, because I can't apparently, scanned the moon for resources, so I'm not... Oh, there it is. There it is. There's the moon scanner. Hmm. Maybe I should do that first. Because the idea that I'm having is that I'm going to... Uh, do all these hops on the moon and then refuel and then get back up and do my thing. So I want this Convertitron thingy. I also want these. This is one. And this is of course now a bit offset. And we need an ore tank. Yeah, we're going to use that one. And we're going to need a lot of batteries, yeah. Yeah, this is now a bit of a problem probably, because we, <laughs> we are going to need a lot of power. And I do not yet have those, uh, what's the color called? Um, fuel cells, yeah, that's the word. Okay, let me think about that. So let's see what we can actually get out of this in regards to Delta V if we don't do anything special. So how about the Terrier engine? What's this going to be for us in regards to Delta V requirements? Okay, only 1400, which is surely not enough. And we also are having some torque issues. Okay, this is now going to be like this. That's better. And how about some more fuel for you? Where are tanks? There they are. Like this. And like that. So we're at 1900, which is basically enough for one landing and return on the moon. But I really would have liked more than that. Hmm. Well, we probably don't need the monopropellant because we're not going to uh, be trying to... Uh, what's it called? Oh, you know, we could try the Apollo approach. We could do a little lander thing, which is actually remote controlled because I'm not required to... I'm not required to... Uh, do those surface scans with a person on board, but I can. What's lighter, this or this? It doesn't matter. But what I can do is rescue Tom Ford. He then plants the flag. He and Sidus goes on the spacewalk, and I'm doing a little uh, Apollo-style thing because yeah, that could work. That could work. Let me think about that. Also, let's try to add some more science equipment because I'm pretty sure that we're going to get into biomes that we haven't been yet. And on the other hand, we're probably not going to have a scientist on board. So yeah, that's a moot point as well. Hmm. Okay, this is going to be a bit more thinking than I thought it would take. So I'm going to cut here and I'll show you what I came up with. Alright, so what I came up with is this weird contraption that basically uh, 
has a few drop tanks and some sort of asparagus configuration, meaning that these type of tanks should drain first, then these, then these, and then we are on the center core. So I want to try out whether or not that is working correctly. I mean, the Delta V numbers are uh, promising, but I'm not sure because one of the decouplers is set to uh, directly feed uh, the vehicle so what i want to do is yeah look at that while i fire up the engine and which one is draining these are draining okay that's good none of those are draining perfect okay let's get rid of the first batch once again the correct tanks are draining you aren't, neither are you, I guess. That is fine, so let's get rid of those. And now, yes, okay, now the correct, the final uh, batch of drop tanks are draining. And getting rid of those, exactly, now we're on the center core. Okay, good. Let's get back to the VAB. So the fuel flow is correct. I mean, it looks hideous, but it should get the job done. I didn't want it to be uh, too close to the other ones uh, and also not too close to those uh, landing legs. So I have them a bit spaced apart. Yeah, it doesn't look that fine, but yeah, we're going to manage. We're going to manage. Maybe I can get them a bit closer, but then we could have a problem with the landing leg. So yeah, let's let's leave it at that. So this is also already 50,000 units or credits. So how are we going to proceed? Let's see whether or not we are going to use... Yeah, we're going to... <laughs> We're going to do the Apollo method. Yep, that's it. So we're not going to use crossfeed over here. What we are going to do is produce some sort of command service module thingy. So why is this a two-man capsule? Because, hey, why are there two science experiments? I did not want that. Probably turned off, uh, turned on symmetry, which was not advised in this case but an easy fix of course okay so the thing is i wanted this to uh be controlled oh <laughs> i want a scientist on board but the problem is the scientist is probably not able to do all those uh, maneuver nodes unless we have remote control. So let's try to do that, shall we? I mean, this is going to hurt us a bit in the Delta V department. And we're also going to need an antenna. Where is it? There it is. So what I'm hoping is that this is going to be enough to uh, contact Kerbin and get this thing remotely controlled via the deep space network. I think I have to try that out first, but yeah. Okay, this is going to be just a building episode basically, so no fancy flying today. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this here just as a small step because what I want to do is now build the command module. Okay. We are, yeah, this is fine. And this is now the new root part. And of course it's going to need a clamp. And also of course, <laughs> oh, okay, there it is. We got that big decoupler. I almost didn't recognize it because in the new Kerbal Space Program version 1.4 and upwards, those big decouplers are no more and they are just tiny little things. All right, let's put another engine on there. 
the poodle, which is efficient as hell. And let's see how that's going to work out. No crossfeed. Poodle, where are you? There you are. Okay, this is going to yield me... Uh, you are not going to fire. Nope. Okay. This is going to yield me only 800 meters per second of delta V, which... Uh, well, it should not be a problem, because what we're going to do is we're really going to try to do this... Uh, we're really going to do this uh, Apollo style. And we're only going to use this for insertion at the moon. So yeah, this could work because as soon as that lander is gone, we have way enough delta V to get back to Kerbin. And also we have enough delta V to rendezvous with the lander once it came back up from the surface. So yeah, big win for everybody. And we're also going to use a relay over here let's put that on here because after we're when we're doing our descent we're not going to uh, need it anymore and what else are we going to need we are going to need power yeah power is always a good idea let's put that over here and let's put that over here as well that's not that pretty, but it's going to work. And we're of course going to need parachutes. Where are they? There they are. Uh, not three, but two should be sufficient in this case. Let's put them up here. And also include two of those. Yeah, this should be fine. We should be able to land with that. Okay, staging completed. All right, so yeah, of course, I almost forgot. We need to dock this thing as well, don't we? So that's where we're going to need those. Are we in the center? Nope, there we are. Okay, that's fine. Delta V, uh, Delta V monopropellant is on board. Uh, antenna is over here. And let's try to make a rocket out of that. We don't want that shroud. And this is already uh, not cross-feeding, which is good. And now we're going to have a problem because we're not going to have a fairing that is big enough to house this. Yeah. Hmm. Well, is this actually going to be a problem? I'm not sure, to be honest. But I... Oh, I'm a bit trepidatious, as you might want to call it. So, what I'm going to do now... This is a bit weird, I have to admit. Because we're doing sort of a double fearing thing. Let's do it like this. And do it like this. Yeah, looks weird, but I think this is... I think it's possible to do it that way. Whoa! Only one, please. Thank you. Okay, let's... Uh, clamshell deploy. Yes, you too. Yes. Full force! Get that out of there. And now let's build it. Okay, well, the reason why I'm doing this here is so that, that I can close this up, yeah, that I can shield most of the sensitive equipment, so to speak. I'm not sure if that's working out, but let's try it. Anyways, yeah, looking a bit weird, but what can you do? Okay, we're going to all the strut, all the things. Yeah, this is now. I'm not sure which one. Uh, 
I can't select it anymore. Ah, that's great. Now we got it. Multiman 1. Okay. So now getting to the fun part. Building an actual... Where is it? An actual booster stage for this. Alright. This might be tiny, but it's... It can get the job done, I think. So this is going to decouple. This is going to decouple together with... No, not together with this. This is weird. Alright. We're going to have to stage those at the same time. And I have to go... I'm going to have to look at that staging later on. Let's try to build our rocket. Okay, not as pretty as my, I might have liked, but hopefully powerful enough. Okay, how are we doing? Well, we're not looking at the moon, we're looking at Kerbin. Okay, this is not even getting us into orbit, of course. Oh, so we need more. How about that? Okay, this is definitely enough to get us into orbit. And we need a thousand more to get to the moon. So what are we going to do about that? Do we have these fine little... Yes, the twin bores. I really like those engines. Uh, not sure why, but I do. Okay, this is now really tall and 4,000 meters of delta V heavy, so to speak. Uh, yeah, we also don't have any, uh, what do you want to call it, reaction wheels and we're going to need plenty of those because this is going to be quite heavy. And I'm probably not going to be able to control it without those. So a lot of batteries as well. Probably overkill. Ah, doesn't matter. Close this here. You are not going to be staged. And you are going to be shoved inside there. Just so that it looks a bit better. Well, could be better. Let's try to do that fairing again with a little less diameter. Okay. That's fine. That's okay. So we now have sort of a nose cone with some stuff in there and we need more delta V. All right. So how are we going to proceed with that? We now have these nice big detached manifolds. And we have these nice little twin bore boosters. Come on, over here. There we go. So, they have, do they have enough power? Yeah, barely. But what are we going to do about that? Let's try and do that uh, combined staging stuff. Okay, 4,000, 5,900, could work, but let's, let's make sure, let's make really sure that this is capable of reaching the moon. That looks ugly. And here we go, this is going to be better. All right. This might work. Uh, I really hope this detaching is going to work. A bit higher maybe, yeah. Because I want this just above the center of gravity when uh, the stage is, haha, <laughs> stage. Okay, some auto strutting. Here as well, and here, and here. And here, and here, and of course, here. All right, 
So, the plan is that this entire assembly here is powerful enough to get us to the moon. Then we're going to insert into a lunar orbit. We're going to rescue Sidus Kerman, of course. Then we're going to... Uh, Wait a second, is this, is this possible? I need to rescue Tom Ford. Tom Ford, I think it was Tom Ford. Kerman, and I want... Uh, Kerman, and I want to rescue Sidus Kerman. Hmm... So I need two spaces and I need scientists because I want to uh, restore these uh, experiments. So, actually... I would need some remote control on this because that scientist is probably not going to be able to control it sufficiently. So we have all remote controlled uh, vehicles, which is not a bad thing in itself. So the lander is going to be remote controlled and the it can be remote controlled because the scientist can fly it, but he won't be able to do some good maneuvering. So, where is a scientist? Bob, you're going solo, my friend. Action groups, yeah, we already have the action groups for the science stuff. And we want to do an action group for the entire decoupling thing. And I want an action group for my antennae. There we go. There we go. And yeah, I think we're going to be fine with this. So we're going to look at how this works the next time when we once again enter the Shadow Zone. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.